Okay, so this will be uh, your last section test, so I'm just recording a very quick video to uh, go over the questions. Um, it's, I've printed a copy. The test is posted to Moodle. Its due date is April 24th by 11.55 p.m. Um, I posted this on uh, Monday the 10th, so that gave you two weeks to engage with these questions, to go over them, to start formulating your responses. Um, it, the 24th is going to be a busy day for you because your writing assignment is due that day as well. So please make sure you plan your time over the next almost two weeks um, effectively. Uh, it's, and I'll remind you also that the, um, the writing assignment uh, forum uh, closes on uh, April 18th. Right, which is um, coming up fairly soon. Uh, the 18th is Tuesday. So um, uh, that is 5% of your final grade, and the writing assignment itself comes in at exactly the same date and time as the uh, final section test as well. So um, uh, this is all boilerplate. You know the readings, you know the video material, um, you know all of this stuff. Um, it's everything is required. Everything is fair game. And if you're not watching the videos uh, that um, that I've posted for this course. You may not have the background to engage with this material, so there's a certain amount of work that needs to be done um, in order to properly engage with the material, and that I've presupposed that you've done as I'm formulating my um, my, my requirements uh, for assessment of uh, your responses here. So, um, like usual, short answer questions um, ranging between uh, three and five sentences uh, for a response each. Um, that's, you know, sort of a minimum kind of thing. If you need more, you need more. So, um, it, give me more if you need to give me more. Um, so, uh, by sentences, I mean full sentences. I have to interpret uh, point form questions way too much. So, um, it, like, it's if you respond in point form, uh, perhaps you've hit a number of points that I can actually put in connection to 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 actually see an answer to the question. But your job is to put those points in connection so that um, so that it congeals into an understanding that somebody who doesn't know this material would be able to understand. Um, so that's that's basically um, what I ask myself when I'm assessing. So somebody who doesn't know this material, would they be able to understand, for example, in the first question, um, what Nietzsche means by perspectivity? Um, uh, so uh, anyhow, um, oh, uh, I've got an error on here. It says two points each, total 10 points. It's four points each, and the questions themselves tell you that for a total 20 points. I'll fix that on Moodle. Um, but nonetheless, um, five questions, four points each. That's 20 points. Uh, same as usual. It's the idea. So I've asked you three questions on Nietzsche and two questions on Sartre. Uh, so it's, I'm not going to bother going over um, the boilerplate stuff because, you know, missed assignments, um, you got to let me know. Uh, for this assignment, I have to have this graded very quickly after I get it. So um, any extensions that I might give, um, I'm going to have to be very stingy with. All right, um, because I'm under the gun to get your grades into the office of the registrar um, at the conclusion of this assignment submission. It's up to you to make sure I've got it and I've got the right file, um, et cetera, et cetera. Be redundant. Plagiarism, um, if I detect it, you fail. Um, that's the thing. And if I detect it, I'm contractually obligated to pass it on to the Dean of Students office. So um, that's the usual boilerplate. I guess I, I, I went over it nonetheless. All right. Okay, so three questions on Nietzsche. The first one, uh, Nietzsche had several points through uh, the sections of BGE, Beyond Good and Evil That Is, that uh, we've looked at, refers to perspectivity, calling it, right in the introduction, or in the preface, um, the fundamental condition of all life. Roderick, in the video I posted to Moodle, defends this position, claiming that it's not a form of relativism. If, then, it's not a form of relativism, what is perspectivity? Right. 
And um, in our discussions of this, it's, I spent a good deal of time actually going over what Nietzsche could mean by this. Um, and uh, not in the section um, that uh, you were asked to read, but nonetheless, um, I'm fond of quoting this. Uh, it's on your page 104 of Beyond Good and Evil. It's section 211. Um, uh, do, 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 where shall I start? Perhaps he even needs to have been a critic, a skeptic, a dogmatist, a historian, an addition, a poet, a collector, a traveler, a puzzle solver, a moralist, a, a seer and free spirit, and nearly all things so that he can traverse the range of human values and value feelings. Um, and be able to look with many kinds of eyes and consciousness from the heights and into every distance, uh, from the depths and into every height, from the corners into every wide expanse. But um, all these are only uh, the preconditions for his task. The task calls for something else. It calls for him to create values. Here Nietzsche is talking about the, the new category of philosopher late on in the book. But nonetheless, um, he's referencing perspectivity insofar as we look with many kinds of eyes and consciousnesses at the phenomena that we... So it's, it's not a view from nowhere, it's a view from everywhere. Right. So anyhow, that's your first question, perspectivity. Um, second question, Nietzsche claims, quote, we do not object to a judgment uh, just because it's false. That's probably what's strangest about our new language. Right. Um, <clears throat> what basis for judgment does Nietzsche suggest uh, in the place of a true and false analysis? Right. Um, this is fairly early on in um, the text. Uh, I'll give you the page reference, which is seven. Right. So um, it, it's section four of On the Prejudices of Philosophers. We do not object to a judgment simply because it's false. This is probably what's strangest about our uh, new language. The question is rather to what extent the judgment furthers life, pr uh, pr uh, preserves life, uh, preserves the species, perhaps even cultivates the species, and we're in principle inclined uh, to claim that judgments that are the most false, and among which uh, are the synthetic a priori judgments all account. Right, are the most indispensable to us that a man could not live without accepting logical fictions, without measuring reality by the purely invented world of the unconditional self-referential, uh, without continual falsification of the world by means of number, that to give up false judgments would be to give up life, to deny life. Right. So um, right there, Nietzsche actually creates a new basis for judgment um, uh, it, it, rather than true or false. What you're saying is false. Well, you know, really, insofar as a judgment is a judgment, a judgment is neither true nor false, but rather it's a judgment. Right. Um, so it's an interpretation. Right. So um, effectively, he's saying that it, it, it basically the, 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 the judgments, the, the, the positions, the, the, all of that that we believe have to further life. Right. Um, so that is uh, question two. Um, uh, question number three and the last one for Nietzsche in uh, section 19 of Beyond Good and Evil, uh, Nietzsche claims that the act of willing as discussed in terms of the supposedly simple concept uh, of the free will is something complicated, something that has unity only as a word. That's your page 18. Um, uh, so it's it, page 18 through 21 is about the range uh, for this question because uh, this is section 19 of Beyond Good and Evil and section 21 of Beyond Good and Evil Nietzsche actually concludes um, the, the sort of dichotomy between free will and unfree will um, that he's trying to overcome there. Uh, Nietzsche lays out a four-part treatment of the will, discuss this treatment examining all four parts in terms of Nietzsche's uh, criticism of the free will. And um, recall, this is where I said uh, the act of willing for um, Nietzsche is not some sort of free act in which we're abstractly free, but we're situated and there's an internal tension, right? I'm fond of using the example of trying to get out of bed in the morning. Um, uh, to, to It's the kind of forcing ourselves, oh, I got it, but I don't want to. There's this tension, right? That, that as we command, there's something in us that also obeys, right? 
So um, it, generally, when we congratulate ourselves for freedom, we're congratulating ourselves um, on the basis of the feeling of pleasure that comes with being a commander. But really, right, that pleasure comes with that uh, he lists all of the emotional states, the feeling of pressure, coercion, uh, et cetera, et cetera. That's on page 19. Um, so uh, it, anyhow, right, he basically the idea is to treat Nietzsche's complicated treatment of the act of the will. He ultimately concludes in um, section 21 that we, we shouldn't talk about free or unfree wills, but rather just strong and weak wills. Um, so basically I'm asking you to discuss that, right? Um, then we're on to Sartre, right? On page 18 of Existentialism and Human Emotions, uh, Sartre makes the following claim. In choosing myself, I choose man. Why does Sartre make this claim and what does this claim have to do with anguish, right? Um, now you kind of had a discussion forum question that disambiguates um, Sartre's position from Kant's position to a certain extent, right? When um, I act only according to that maxim whereby I can will it at the same time to be universal law, Kant argues that we're legislating universal morality because we share a rational faculty that, 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 that allows us to do that. My judgments should become the same as your judgments, etc., etc. Sartre was extremely critical of this, um, showing that just basically the categorical imperative has a lot of ambiguity with regard to it. He, he concentrated on the second formulation, but nonetheless, right, there's an act of interpretation, there's an act of choosing, and there's an act of choosing can't even, right, if we are uh, universalizing the maxim of our actions. Whereas, if existence really does precede essence, what Sartre is arguing is that really, when in creating ourselves, we are creating ourselves as exemplars, as examples of what human beings should do. If existence precedes essence, we are defining humanity each and every day with each and every one of our choices with each and every one of our actions. So what it means to be a human being, since we're free and nothing until we choose or act and absolutely responsible for everything that we do, that kind of responsibility has to do with the fact that each and every one of us are defining human beings. So um, where Kant bases this in reason, Sartre bases this on, on um, what the fancy philosopher terms would have us, um, it, it freedom as an ontological condition and the requisite responsibility for this, right? Uh, this is just the case. This is what we do, right? If we don't have an essence that pins us down, right? If we aren't a category of things among other things, right? If we believe that we're free and define ourselves through our choices, then effectively, as we're defining ourselves through our choices, we are defining humans, right? So, um, at page 18 to 21 are the passages that are kind of relevant there. Um, so, that's question number four. And then finally, um, question number five on page 41 of existentialism and human emotions. This is um, actually in reference to my favorite passage in Sartre. Um, Sartre uh, addresses the objection, you're able to do anything, no matter what, which amounts to the criticism of his position that there are no a priori values, that all values are arbitrary, right? That you can do, you can do anything you want, right? If existentialism is true, right? Well, effectively any artist, and actually oddly he imports this from Nietzsche, Nietzsche makes claims like this, any artist knows that really, right, when you are creating, the act of creation creates a certain kind of synthetic unity of its own, right? I mean, effectively the artist is in the same position. There is nothing telling the artist what the artist should create, right, and unless the artist is, you know, just a technician, right, um, writing a jingle for a song, or creating mall art, or uh, paint me a portrait to my specification so that it matches my couch, that sort of thing, but really an artist doing the creative work of art, creating meaning through their art, right, is 
one that is in exactly the same situation, right? It's an expression of freedom the artist creates himself as he is painting, and there is an order, there is a structure that appears through the creation, is the idea there, right? Um, so the question is, how does art, responding to this criticism, compare ethics to art? Basically, um, I want you to unpack that comparison. What, for the existentialist, do the artist and um, the moral choice maker, uh, it's every human being everywhere, right, have in common? Um, so that is your final section test um i really hope you enjoyed this course uh, i tried to select uh, material that would speak to you and how you live your lives um it's, i'm interested to read your final responses i'm very interested to read your final papers because there you reflect on what you've taken from the course um so uh but nonetheless you've got under two weeks now um, to engage with this material. So uh, please use your time wisely. Um, if you haven't already uh, accessed and, and viewed uh, the, 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 the content uh, for this material, do so um, because you are going to be completely lost if you don't. Um, and then uh, on top of that, remember the discussion forums um, and the writing project forum as well. Um, you have to do those things because between them, that's another 20% of your final grade. Um, it's You're going to be really busy if you've left everything to the last minute. Um, so use your time wisely and uh, thank you for um, the semester. All right. All right. I'll talk to you.